In the last video, I showed how you can use React with this new import mapped approach to JavaScript in Rails through the HTM library that makes it possible to write React without JSX. But I wanted to take a opportunity here to show that you can also go the other way from here. You can start with this import map approach that's going to be the default in Rails 7. And then if you run into issues, concerns, or annoyances with that setup, it's quite easy to go from here to a fully node transpiler bundler setup. And we'll make a simple conversion like that today. And I'll also show you a new feature of the import map setup in Rails with the new command line interface for dealing with JavaScript dependencies on the CDN. So let's start by just setting up our basic skeleton. This is again running on the Rails uh, main PR for import map. Um, Actually, that's not true. We've merged that PR. This is now on Rails main and using the latest development uh, import map gems and turbo and stimulus and so forth. But let's have a look at setting up the same kind of controller that we used in the other video that just gave us a components index that we can show a React component on. So I'll start by running the um, generator to create a new controller here called components and it's going to have an index action and let's have a look at setting up the div that we need for um, showing our react component in it it is going to be an id and we're going to call it clock because we're going to use that same clock component that we used in the other video but before we get started on that, we have to add all the libraries we're going to use. And this is where I'll show you the new import map bin stop, um, which is a way of interacting with your import map, which if we have a quick look at that, just has the default stuff in it right now. It has the hotwire libraries and it mounts the controller. But for this example, we're going to use React. So we need to add the React libraries, the React frameworks to this, as well as HTM to show the initial setup. So let's have a look at that. And we're going to run this new import map um, command that's added by the import map gem now. And we can run pin to say we want to pin um, these libraries or these frameworks from the JavaScript CDN that this is backed by by default, which is JSPM. You can use other backers like um, JS Deliver and Unpackaged as well. But let's just add these three uh, libraries and frameworks and then have a look and see what that generates for us. So what this command does, it actually calls out to a web service running on JSPM that will resolve these three package names and give us the most recent version of all of them as well as the dependencies that are needed to, to make them go. And those dependencies might differ from um, the CDN to CDN. Some CDNs package up more into single bundles and others uh, let the dependencies kind of float on their own. But here you can see we've pinned a total of uh, five packages. And if we jump back to have a look at the import map, you can see that these five packages have been mapped. Now, as you can see, this is a file you can hand edit, but you can actually also manipulate this file through the import map, not just by pinning, but you can unpin things. So let's say we wanted to remove HTM, for example. Um, we weren't going to use that anymore. Boom, that's gone. Um, let's say we wanted to update one of the pins that we have, for example, the version of React that was mapped by default was 1702. Let's say we wanted uh, one back, 1701. Running the pin command again will update both the pin and the dependencies that go with it. So now you see that React is 1701 and React DOM was 1702, but the um, dependency, uh, I think that was, yeah, object assign uh, also follows that. And we'll automatically update that in the file in line. Um, and as I said, you don't have to use JSPM. You can also use um, another 
JavaScript CDN. So if we first start by unpinning React and then we'll pin it again from a, another CDN uh, from JS Deliver, where you'll see that that CDN actually packages things a little differently. It doesn't split out object assign into its own package. So if we jump back in here, you can see that React is packaged from JS Deliver. You should probably use just a single uh, CDN if you can get away with it. That's just a single SSL handshake and setup. So we will unpin um, React again. Actually, we can just pin React and then rely on the default being um, JSPM. So now we have React, uh, React DOM, and oh, we actually also needed HTM back before we can proceed. One more thing we're going to add here is we're going to add a new pin all, which is essentially a glob from a new directory called components. I'm going to mount that under components. Um, and then let's create that. So here we're going to have our components. And the one component we're going to put in there is this clock. Um, this is the same example that I've been using in the other video. I'm going to paste in the converted to HTM setup example. Um, this was the same example we were using in one of the previous videos. I haven't changed anything here. As you can see, this uses HTM instead of um, JSX to set things up. And then we actually also need to have that uh, React DOM render call. So now we have a component set up and we can include that component here. Um, we're actually not going to use stimulus for this. We can just import the components uh, clock. And as you can see here, we're using a bare identifier, not this. And the bare identifier is the one that works with the import map setup. It's the one that's going to be defined here. Um, Let's actually just remove stimulus as well here, because then I'll show you what this produces, which is another feature of the import map um, command, is that you can show the JSON that will be produced in the import map script tag that will be included on the page. And as you can see here, we have the components clock mounted, and it'll mount it to this directory under the asset pipeline. Okay. I think we actually have all the bits that we need. Uh, let me see, did I add the clock there? Yes, I did. We should be able to start our server now and then have a look at that setup. Yes, we're in res. Oh, I forgot that we need to set up the route. So we're going to mount this on route. And let's have a look at that. Okay, we have the components. We have our hello world clock that's being rendered. This is being rendered through the import map setup. This is exactly as we'd done already in the previous videos, except perhaps a little nicer now with the import map bin stop that we can use. But let's assume that we can't deal with HTM. We want our JSX, so we'll convert this to using a more traditional setup. Um, you could just slot in the Webpacker gem here to do that, but I'm actually going to use another example using ESBuild because ESBuild is a neat new super fast bundler for JavaScript, and it's very easy to use it together with Rails, actually piggybacking off the existing asset pipeline to do so, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a um, package uh, JSON file that's going to have our dependencies and everything set up. Um, but let me just start by having a name and the fact that it's private, and then we'll add our dependencies through NPM. So let's jump over to the command line here. And we're going to add React, React DOM, which is the same things as we were just using, and then also Turbo Rails because we had that on the import map setup. And then we're going to add ES build. And these packages are just going to install and add it themselves to, to the package um, JSON file that we had. And then in this package JSON file, we're going to add a couple of scripts. We're going to add scripts for building and for watching using um, ES build. So as you can see here, we're running ES build because we had already installed that. It's going to produce a bundle where the entry point is the same entry point as we were using for the import map. And we'll have to adjust that a little bit to make it work for 
ES build rather than the import map setup. And then we will actually do an output file to put this inside the asset pipeline because then we can refer to it both in development and in production and we'll get the right stamping and digesting of the file in production. This is a really neat way of not even needing an explicit integration for ES build to be able to use it. So now we have that set up and now we need to convert our um, JavaScript to be able to use this setup. And the first thing we have to do is we have to get away from these bare identifiers for the components that we have locally. Um, also, we're not setting this up anymore. So we're going to import this clock, but the clock that we have right now, we have that as a, as a JS file. So let's actually add a JSX version and we could be explicit about requiring that. And then we can have them side by side so you can see the difference. Um, I'm going to do the JSX version here. And that JSX version is just going to be the vanilla version as you would find it on the React site. I'm going to paste that in. You see, uh, let's compare them back to back here. In the import map version, we needed to do this little HTM dance. We import HTM as well. We bind it to H and then we use that down here instead of JSX. In the JSX version, there's no HTM and we're just rendering the JSX directly without modification. Um, the second thing we have to do is we have to remove the import map tags from the um, layout because we're no longer using the import map approach. And then what we're going to do instead is we're just going to do a totally standard JavaScript include for application. And we're also going to do um, let it be tracked by Turbo. And then we have to remember also to defer such that this JavaScript is not run before we've rendered the DOM because our component relies on the div ID clock. So I think this is actually it. We should be able to start ES build now and um, see if we can build. So the first thing we can do is just run the build command that we had set up. And as you can see, pretty quick, 46 milliseconds. Of course, there's not a lot to this application, but even very large applications build very quickly with ES build. Now we can see this build output here, actually, if we have a look in here and you can see all the stuff that ES build puts together to include react and the react dom and blah 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 to get our clock component set up oh yeah actually it also has turbo in there now you can do two things with this you can either check in this artifact uh, which makes things a little easier on the deployment side now you don't need a special step to build with ES build or you can cook in the ES build command as part of your deployment script whatever works for you it doesn't really matter um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to set it up and instead of doing a build we're going to do a watch so that we can make changes and we're going to start another console here that will run our rail server and let's see if we actually got everything configured correctly um, go back here <laughs> the funny thing is of course you can't tell that this is not running off the import map version. That's the whole point is that this was exactly the same. But if we take a look under the network tab here and we see to reload, we'll see now we have only a single script. We have that script that was compiled um, by ES built with all the stuff that I just showed you in it instead of having the individual layers as we would with the um, import map version. So this is essentially it. This is how little it takes to jump from an import mapped setup to an ES build traditional setup. So I think this makes a big difference in calming someone down who might think that, oh, if I'm starting on the import map approach, what if I later want to do JSX or I want to do something else where um, I need to use a bundling tool? Well, you just make these very simple changes as we've seen in the um, application JS file that we had set up. It's actually a very little difference. I mean, this is of course also just a dumb example, but the difference is between that and that, and then having the JSX component uh, versus having the um, import map version. So that's it. 
I'm continuing to work on this stuff, but we are rapidly progressing towards a Rails 7 Alpha that you can play with as a gem, but you can obviously already use this and play with it off the Rails mainline. Um, there's still a lot of development going on on the import map dash Rails gem and the other gems that go with this, but we are improving it, making it better. This setup with the JavaScript CDNs in particular I think is something that is really appealing. Uh, I know that a fair number of people have some instinctual reactions to JavaScript CDN. So can I trust them? Are they going to be fast enough? Are they going to be reliable? And I think those fears will dissipate as this starts rolling out as people, more people start using this in production. In fact, we are working on and have a running version of Hey, that has been set up on import maps is using the JavaScript CDN that is JSPM. And we're going to launch that very shortly. I have a big story about how we've done that, the performance impact and improvements in several ways, and certainly the improvement in the development experience where we don't have any of the build steps set up. But as I showed, if we should come to regret that for Hey, for whatever reason, it would be a very small jump to turn the same JavaScript back into a built transpiled output with a single file. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this and I will hopefully have more good stuff to show you soon.